Let us focus our hearts and minds as we listen to our gathering music. Good morning. Welcome everyone to worship today. Welcome to those here in the sanctuary and welcome to those who are out on the patio and to those who are joining us from the sanctuaries of their home on Zoom. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the festival of Pentecost Sunday. Before Jesus was taken to heaven, the event we remembered and celebrated last week on Ascension Sunday, Jesus promised that we would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Well, today is that day, Pentecost Sunday. This morning we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the Christian church. Our worship continues this morning with the call to worship. Divine teacher, whirl around us with your wisdom. Divine comforter, encircle us with the peace that comes only from you. As the holy wind fills our lives with dreams, empower us to live God's hope in this world. As the holy fire fills our hearts with visions, empower us to create a world of justice and peace. May the divine gales of this day move us to know the love of God. 
Let us worship God together. And now let us stand and sing the first of our two opening songs, Wind of the Spirit. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I pro prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken and will act says the Lord we will read the psalm responsibly how manifold are your works O Lord in wisdom you have made them all the earth is full of your creatures yonder is the sea great and wide with its swarms too many to number living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. The Pentecost reading is found in the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.
Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me where are you going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has, all that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. The festival of Pentecost. Pentecost is a kind of Easter for the church. Fifty days ago, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. Today, we celebrate the rising of Christian communities, the birth of the church. Immediately following Jesus' death, his followers wandered in the wilderness and wondered what they would do without him. They were devastated as they hid behind closed doors. But on that day of Pentecost, a mighty wind blew the keep out sign off the door of that upper room, and they all spilled out with lit faces and the tongues of angels. And that's what the Holy Spirit continues to do among us today, knocking off our keep out signs and sending us out on fire with the love of God. Now, some say the only sensation of Pentecost is that a group of people could suddenly speak in different languages so that all were able to hear the message of God's love. But that's just part of the miracle. God is always full of surprises for us, especially when the Spirit's involved. The other part of the spectacle of Pentecost is the hearing of of the message. Sure, there were people who thought the disciples were drunk and thus could not hear their speeches, but there were others who understood, and they were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? And we learn that later that day, 3,000 of those who heard were baptized into the faith. So the miracle of Pentecost is twofold, speaking and hearing. 
And both transform the church. Both are part of this rising of the church. The Spirit empowers all of us to share or speak our faith using the singular gifts that each of us have been given. But also, the Spirit gives us the Pentecost ability to listen to others, to our neighbors, our friends, our enemies, so that we might hear God speaking. Just like the first disciples, if we leave our upper rooms, our secure locations, to share our fire of love with the world, and we demand that everyone speak our own specific language and dialect, then we will miss much of what God has in store for us. So we need to learn to listen to neighbors and friends, to others who've maybe lost their faith or maybe never had any faith to begin with, so that we might begin to understand them. They probably speak a different language than we do here in the church. Our mission continues to be finding what to find ways to communicate the message of God's love for all people, to get the word out. And we need to be open to the many ways the Holy Spirit is inspiring us to share our faith. We need to be open to the Pentecost ability to listen to people who have different experiences than we do, different faith journeys than we've had, people whose backgrounds are different from our own, people whose economic circumstances are dissimilar, those who have no church background, or people whose church experience is a dim memory, people who are of a different age than we are, and yes, listen to people who espouse a different politics than we do. The miracle and challenge of Pentecost is to learn new languages, different dialects from our own. The Holy Spirit is still blowing among us, and it has never meant business as usual, because the world is ever-changing. And the church needs to adapt to be better listeners. Disciples today need to learn new languages. Those followers of Jesus who huddled in that room were afraid. And sometimes we're afraid too. We're afraid because our church today isn't the same as when we were younger. But we don't need to be scared because the Spirit continues to give us ears to hear those strange languages and voices to sing a new song. It all started on that first day of Pentecost, when John the Baptist's promise finally came true. Those who huddled fearfully that day behind closed doors were washed not with water, but with the Holy Spirit and fire. It was God's gift to them, but more importantly, it made them God's gifts to the world. Their baptism by fire was not just about their own spiritual renewal, but for the renewal of the whole world. Pentecost is God's cure for all whose spirits have grown dim and whose tongues are tied. Pentecost is God's cure for all who have a difficult time listening to people speaking to them in a language they cannot understand. The burned out are set on fire again with the love of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Now the litany for Pentecost. God, we give thanks for the gift of your Holy Spirit, our helper. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, the Spirit of God present among us. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit, as on the day of Pentecost, when your Spirit rested on your followers as tongues of fire. Rest on us now, O oh God as they were filled with the Spirit and began to speak and prophesy. Fill us now, O oh God, just as Jesus, our Redeemer and God, the Creator, have promised. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, empowering us to proclaim good news to the poor, release for the prisoners, to exchange beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, a spirit of praise instead of despair. Come, Holy Spirit. We are your church, your body on earth, who trusted in the resurrected Christ. And in the Holy Spirit of God, 
here with us now. Let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church universal, for its ministries, and for the spread of the gospel. Shower your spirit upon Sunday school students, confirmands, and those celebrating baptismal anniversaries, especially Lucy Theobald and James Mary. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you for the earth, our precious home. We give thanks for the diversity of plant and animal life on our planet. Empower us by your spirit to be wise and faithful stewards of all you have made. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. For the nations and those who govern, give those in authority understanding hearts that they work together to bring justice and peace on earth. Grant all who vote in elections wisdom and discernment. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. For those in need around the world, for victims of crimes, for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation, for those who are incarcerated, for all who are ill or who suffer in any way, we pray especially for Cornel Church, Leroy Rittenbach, Martha Schmidt, Isa Haggerty, Ruth Ann Henderson, Kyle Muntazir, Annegret, Rose, and those we name before you out loud or in the quiet of our hearts. We give thanks for the birth of Oliver Jack, the Bischoff's grandson. <laughs> God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. For this congregation and its ministries, for those who plan and lead worship, for acolytes and communion servers, for readers and tech ministers, for all who prepare and clean our worship space, for our awesome choir and music folks. May we worship, may our worship be pleasing in your sight. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Into your merciful, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Let us stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Would you share that peace with one another? Peace, Kathy. I was just telling Kathy what a wonderful, incredible choir piece oh. that was. Thank you so much, Robert and Andre and the choir. Fantastic. It was really powerful coming after that reading. It was really, really something. So as you just heard in the prayers, and there's a, a flower on the altar, a rose, uh, celebrating the birth of Oliver Jack Spring, who was born to Anna, we know her as Anna Bischoff, now Spring, uh, and her husband, Justin. And uh, so, and of course, this is the grandson of Barbara and John Bischoff, who we usually see, but I suspect are down there today, um, celebrating that. Uh, so that is so wonderful, wonderful. Um, I know we also have a, a, an announcement about Jonathan's play.
It struck me as I was listening to the sermon how appropriate it is that I wanted to share some information with you today about Jonathan's place and how it really is the work of the Holy Spirit. So I want to give you a few examples. You're used to me asking for help with the feet, bringing the food in and, and so on. So brief on that, I still need one more cook for Wednesday. So if you have time from 10 to 12, please sign up. But just a short little bit so you know exactly like what we're doing. So we've done a little bit of research the last couple months, and we found out that for cooking for 40 people once a month, our costs coming in with what you guys donate and what we purchase is about $6 to $7 per person. Wow. And that's a full main course, a side, vegetables, salad, dessert, and I'm missing one other thing, bread, I think. I don't think I can do that for $6 a night no. at home. So we're being very economical with uh, donations coming in. We really are getting a system in place. So I wanted to share that with you um, and how appreciative Jonathan's place is of how nutritious the meals are that we send. The Holy Spirit coming in on this through word of mouth. I mean, I talk up this program with a lot of people outside of the church. We have received almost $200 of cash donations. People say, I want to support that. Mm. They may or may not be churchgoers. I really want to support that. I mm. think it's a great sure. program. Um, Susan had the great um, suggestion to go talk to some of our local stores. Do they do community donations? We've received, uh, I think, about 110 from a couple of our local stores. Um, shout out to them if you shop at Safeway Strawberry or Trader Joe's Larkspur please tell them, hey, we understand you made a donation to one of our programs, we really appreciate it. If you know other stores in your area that you want us to contact, I'm happy to do that, just see me, we'll put them on our list. Again, people are so, so encouraged for this program for what we're doing to help those in the community. And finally, literally the day after our last cooking, when we were kind of struggling to find little kitchen implements in the in the kitchen saying we're going to have to just buy stuff and where's the grater where's this where's that literally through the friend of a friend of a friend they were literally they were cleaning out their mom's house who had moved to assisted living giving everything away and we got about 150 dollars of in-kind donation and we have every implement you could possibly imagine wow. literally that did not happen Holy through Spirit us, again. right? Yeah. So again, I was going to talk to you about this anyway, but it just struck me. This is a perfect day to tell you. So I know we do many, many, many ministries in our congregation. This is one of them. Um, please just let people know, don't, don't uh, deprive yourself of sharing what we're doing with the uh, community. It doesn't have to be asking for money. Just, hey, this is a program we're doing. And be amazed, amazed at the response you're gonna get. So wanted to share that. We're, we probably won't all be together since we're starting summer next week. Wanted to give you that update and I'll have more coming when we're all back in the fall. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Ruth. That's fantastic, fantastic. Um, I Hope just wanted all the women to put June 2nd, 5 o'clock, my house. And we're going to have a planning meeting about having uh, a, an extension of Mar uh, Marin women. Uh, uh, we will be meeting more in the fall, we, but we're going to have a planning session and seeing what we would like to do. We want it to be spiritually based, but we're not going to do Bible study. We want it uh, as an opportunity for women in the congregation to really meet and get to know each other. And I hope women of all ages will come. June 2nd, 5, my house, be there, be square. Great, you can just set it down. Any other uh, announcements? Then please take note of all the, the announcements on the back of your bulletin. Um, things coming up, snack bags, the assembly collections, the congregational meeting in a couple weeks. Uh, our, that's our regular semi-annual meeting. Um, so yes, anything else? Then let us prepare for Holy Communion. <laughs> Stop. Oh. 
Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give God, God thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. at home to raise their piece of bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those at home, I invite you to eat of the bread of life. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those at home, I invite you to drink of the cup of salvation. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. One of the first things Jesus did after the resurrection was to eat with his disciples. <coughs> Jesus was always telling the left out and ignored, the hurting and the hungry, the sick and the hopeful, I have a seat saved for you. Friends, that is why we come to this table. We come to remember, to be close, and to get a taste of the kingdom of God. So come hungry and come seeking. Christ always has a seat saved for you.
Let us stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus our Redeemer and friend. Amen. In each gust of wind, may we reach out to the God of inspiration. In each flicker of flame, may we follow the Christ of light, for the Spirit of God surrounds us, filling our hearts with dreams, our minds with visions, and our souls with the energy to create the realm of God on earth. Amen. Ha <laughs> ha 